Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 22. I feel fairly confident in Toto's survival, so nothing can get me down from this point on. Nothing. <laughs> nothing can go wrong. Oh yeah, Shibuya. Oh, that was so three episodes ago. <laughs> wow, you, you missed a lot. A whole lot of stuff. Like, wait till you hear what's happened. Wow, Panda's such a, a true bro. Yeah, uh, this is the first we're seeing of what is inevitably going to be a lot of divisions about this. That's unfortunate. But understandable. I get it. But totally reject it. Meanwhile, in Malaysia. How did she get there? Please tell me they're not in bed together. Oh my god, they're in bed together. No. He's been waiting for this. <laughs> Aren't they. Okay. I thought they were related. I'm so lost as to how. She just left? <laughs> that was fast. So. If she was really all about that life, she would short the end. Short businesses, life insurance, property insurance, Japan's tourism industry, and go very long on alcohol and tobacco. Yeah, this is gonna ripple everywhere. What's even crazier is will people even know what happened? I mean, or know why it happened? If I recall correctly, when I first heard her whole money spiel, my reaction was something like, an enemy of an enemy is not necessarily a friend, and allies are not necessarily friends. For that matter, bizarrely, sometimes people on the opposite side of you are much closer to being your, your true friends. If the principles are there, if the reasoning is there, if the good-naturedness is there, but the conclusions and logic are different, I would take that over someone on my side who's, like, motivated for different reasons. Do you need the power? Do you desire the power? Give us the cube. Speaking of falling into holes. You just portaled him. The scope of options at fake Ghetto's fingertips. It's going to be such a crazy relief when we finally get Gojo back. He's referring to his host body, right? This is fake Ghetto learning from real Ghetto's errors. I guess victory is never truly final. Oh, huh? Just <laughs> try to kill him? Is he dead? Is he dead? Is he dying? Is he dead? Is he gone? Good. Bye. Right. It makes so much sense. He waited till Mahito was at full power. And now he just has Mahito. Bye. Oh, no. But seriously, oh no, this is terrible. For everyone still alive. He pulled a Hisoka and waited for the ripe fruit. Speaking of your allies not being your friends. Sure. Episode 46, Metamorphosis Part 2. Mihito is a great villain that I will not miss. It feels really good to enjoy a villain's death for once. No mixed feelings this time. It's been a day for Yuji, huh? Yuji's big day, and it's not over yet. It's got the cursed energy materia. Well, he's got one in Mito. That is really, really cool power. Oh, they showed up. Wow, they really booked it. They, they, I feel like they showed up just to demonstrate how unbelievably powerful Fake Ghetto is. Caught the bullet too. 
Right? The number one curse item. Gone. Alright, this is either redemption or death. I hope it's redemption. It would be such a big deal if she manages to affect this fight. Ouch. 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 This sucks. Oh no! Oh no! She didn't exist just to be the test on me for this move, right? Nothing could go wrong anymore. Nothing could go wrong. Someone just pulled her out of there, right? Oh, thank God. Speaking of redemption, showing up. I was convinced she was dead, <laughs> honestly. My hope for Miwa is that they're building up these successive failures, one after the other, to build towards a massive payoff when she actually figures it out. At least that's how I justify it to myself. Let us lighten the load a little bit. Also, we're scared of you. Remember when they were trying to kill Yuji? Yeah, it's still a big unknown. Though some of them probably will still want to kill Yuji more than ever. Wait, what? The related? Huh? He's found a way to cheat death. What? There's some, wait, what? We really just blew up this whole family tree thing in 10 seconds. So Ghetto is his cursed father and Yuji is his brother. I guess we're just gonna gloss right over that for now. The coincidence of me starting this with like question about who your real friends are. His quest, his motivation is largely rooted to family, right? So even though he's Yuji's enemy, he's not as far away as it might appear. <laughs> The dynamics of this whole thing were already complicated. Complicated enough. This is a lot at once. But now we have a name for Ghetto at least. That's how he knew. He felt Yuji. I thought he was a curse though. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> Great thing that Yuji was like fighting this not that long ago. Before all this other stuff. Damn, I did not expect this at all, but I'll take it. It's the Brotherhood arc. I wonder all the villains in the show so smug. I wonder how confused everyone else must be. Like what what is happening? What is that? <laughs> I mean, he's holding his own. That is so cool. I don't know why this took me so long to think about. Speaking of My Hero Academia, there's a really big power connection between fake ghetto and all for one. And more than just power, I think it fits into both thematically because of the idea of absolute selfishness versus selflessness. Like if you have no guiding values or principles at all, basically everything is at your disposal. Other people are just tools, but there's a deep emptiness. Whereas on the other side, you're fighting the same fight, but carrying way more, way heavier of a burden, but there's like a richness. I mean, that also increases the Mahito Shigaraki parallels, despite just having similar features. They're both just tools in that ever expanding Arsenal. I thought the animators were having trouble. Was this also animated by a 16 year old? I mean, it means a lot. He's fighting for something. From villain to friend or brother. <laughs> Yuji, yeah, Yuji must be so confused. We had this huge fight in the bathroom. It was awesome. Now Yuji has two brothers. Heard what I said about missing everything. Oh god, it's gonna be so satisfying if Gojo actually shows up. <laughs> Please, no one die. I guess I severely underestimated her. To his credit, he showed up. 
Yuji just burns hot. I know it's a lot to take in right now, but... <laughs> Look, just go with it. Roll with it. <laughs> Yuji has two, like, really, really obsessive brothers. He does have pheromones. At least you got a hit in, unlike Miwa. Damn, that Blazaga, though. <laughs> that was encouraging. This is a very interesting full circle for season two, considering the conversation we saw her have with Ghetto, young Ghetto, accidentally maybe pushing him more over the edge than he already was. Is she also the, the woman we saw in that Toto flashback way back when? The one that reminded me of Haruka from FLCL? I mean, she hit him with the classic, what is your type? If this is a Toto connection, I am prepared to love her immensely. God, this show gives me whiplash in a, in a great way. In this episode, every two minutes, there's a surprise. Mito's dead, and then we have Ghetto's identity. Yuji has a new brother. Ui Ui and Mei Mei are sleeping together. What's up with that. And now the Kyoto school is here. This woman, this ice woman is very powerful, but don't worry because Yuki's here and I'm probably forgetting something. The idea that fake ghetto is this 150 year old or so sorcerer is interesting. It's another ancient evil, almost more directly so, or more to the usual thematic point in that it's not really a human. I mean, it is, but it seems more like a curse. There might be this, this feeling of continuity of identity and memories, but at this point, it's just something like an evil entity, right? It's something that in a very reduced form is like a spirit. One of the things I've always liked about curses in this show is that there are certain things present in human life that we all experience that are so concrete when reduced to kind of the most reducible layer. They're like weird phantoms or spirits or entities or whatever that pass through everyone or, or everyone can experience or tap into equally. Speaking about them or feeling them or thinking about them, it may exist only as concepts, not as any kind of mythical force, but even though it has no physical form, it ends up having a lot of reality practically. And those things or spirits or curses or whatever are, are put to life through human vehicles, human vessels, to the point where they have very tangible results. Also, and relatedly, we think a lot about evolutionary processes and organisms passing on DNA and and continuing surviving. While it might be harder to look at since, again, there's no physical body really here, but ideas and feelings and legacy have sort of an evolutionary process of their own. Thoughts, feelings, consciousnesses do have a way of getting repeated from person to person. For example, parent to child or from abuser to victim, etc., etc. It's like the negative side or reverse of someone like Erwin, you know, carrying the, the burden of the past, putting the legacy on your own shoulders, pushing one step farther. It works in both directions. This is way outside the scope of the episode and maybe even the show so far, but Looking at it that way, I think if you go far enough into any of those things, as terrible as they seem on the outside, there's something pure, beautiful, I don't know if that's the right word, powerful underneath. Honestly, I don't know if I can articulate it any further than that, but I really do believe that Kingdom Hearts is light, that at the root of it is something good, something worth fighting for, despite the difficulty. And the, the fake ghettos or ca camos of the world will give way eventually to the noble people who are willing to fight that battle.